Hey you, yeah, you. Do you have hundreds and hundreds of models that are unpainted? Well, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you four quick army-wide paint schemes that you can get all your miniatures done to a tabletop standard. What, for me? No, <laughs> all my models are painted. Ow! Ow! Oh, ow! Okay, okay, ow! 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 Oh, oh, no, 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 no! no. Let's go into number one. Oh. They have a cave troll. <laughs> Statues coming to life is practically a fantasy trope and will suit pretty much any game system. Start with the zenithal highlight and the ring bring down the contrast to the black wash. Stone never has a single colour to it. To replicate this, splash on a series of different washes to give some visual interest. Here I've used some green, some skeleton horde as a light brown, and some purples. Don't worry if it looks too zany, because what we're going to do is bring it all together with a nice mid-grey tone, aiming to hit all the raised edges, either where it's pointed up the way towards whatever light source you're using, or where the statue would have a lot of motion. Maybe the dirt and grime gets moved away or washed out by something like rain. Personally, I love it when my statues have glowing eyes. So what I've used is a bright white in the centre of the eye, and then I'm going to use a red speed paint all around, pulling both in the eye socket and slightly outside to create the illusion of the glow. To really pump that visual interest, use a dot of white or yellow in the centre of the eye to create the illusion of the glow. Consider adding dirt, pigment powders, or even tufts of grass to really sell the statue effect. This will look great on a single model or as an entire army and takes almost no time. Who are you going to call? Name a better duo than ghosts and armies. I'll wait. From 40k legions of the damned to the flying Dutchman, spirits are found on every battlefield and every bar. I first tried out Citadel's etheric blue and I liked the look but it was a little too consistent. Hexwraith Green has been growing in popularity, but it was a little bit more Slimer and less Army of the Dead. Why choose between the two when I could have both though? I decided to use the green to pick out any interesting details. Here I used it on the skin, the hair, the fire, and around the base of the model. I then used Etheric Blue to fill everything else in, the weapons, the armour, and the top part of the cloth. I think this looks much nicer than either of the individual colours. Who knew? Two colours are better than one. To tie everything together, I'm going to use a light blue. Notice I'm using a hard palette. I've been doing this for ages. Not because I'm a professional, but because I use anything in reach as my dry palette. Again, aim for the top parts of the models where you want that glow to be, and make sure you don't cover the full amount of the green, otherwise you'll lose the nice effect. Consider using cotton wool around the base to create the illusion of mist. Add in things like leaves swirling up to make it really dramatic. If you like this, then give it a like. And comment below your ideas for full army-wide paint schemes that are fast. On with the video. I've called this one fire and ice, but realistically you could have used any two contrasting colours. The idea is to split the model in half, with one colour at the top and one colour on the bottom. I started off with a dark blue wash, this is actually Black Templars, mixed with a bit of blue ink. I've left the base of the model yellow, and I'm going to go in with a yellow speed paint to highlight all of that. I'm then going to use a liberal dry brush of orange. And this is where the fire and ice sort of effect comes in. My model is meant to be in a dark, low light environment with a bright, almost OSL light coming from below. Don't be afraid to put the colour higher up on the model than maybe you're comfortable with. In a dark environment, the light could go very high. To sell the effect of this being in the moonlight, I'm going to pop up the blue by using a light dry brush, centering on the top of the model or wherever my light source is going to be. Adding a lava base would really make this model even more interesting, but since this is for my Mordor or Angmar army, I didn't want it to be too dissimilar to the rest of my models. 
metal. Automatons, robots or metal constructs make for great army background. Anything could be a robot if it tries hard enough. This is my proxy for Gulivir... Gulivir? Gulvar. Bob. This is my stand-in for Bob. It's a model for Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. I start off by applying an overall patchy bronze colour. I say patchy because I'm willingly leaving patches of white and black coming through. I do this because I'm planning on doing a black wash all over the model to dull it down and just give a bit more variation. To create the illusion that this model has been sitting out a little bit too long, I'm going to use that etheric blue and I'm going to let it pool wherever water would collect on the model and where it's going to oxidise. This model is meant to be almost chameleonic, so it's copying this statue, so I paint the statue to match. To really sell the idea of this being a gold or bronze statue, I'm using a dry brush of silver wherever the light would hit it. Next time you have a look at metal, look out for the bright patches, which can normally tell you where the light source is coming from. Metal is highly reflective. Consider using things like streaking grime, bird poop in white splatters, or dirt and leaves to sell the effect of this unmoving statue. If you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe so you can see more techniques on how to get all your models done. As always, thank you to my patrons, and remember to battle the backlog.